a child says, I hate you, what are they really saying? What's, what's that in English? That's trauma, it says I hate you, but in plain English it says, I hate myself. Because when you grow up in a home where people don't pay attention to you or people hurt you, you take that, that you're not okay. The way that our children's brains are designed is that in the early infancy, it is all about being one with the parent and so that everything that happens to the parent becomes what happens to that child. As the child moves from two years old to about 12 years old, the brain becomes a little bit more sophisticated. And in that moment, the child still is becoming a little bit separated from the parent, but also everything that is said to that child becomes their reality. So when someone says, you're the problem, or I hate you, they don't have the filters to be able to take that and say, wow, my mom or dad, they're just really just regulated right now. They don't really mean that. They're just having a hard day. No, they take it in to say, I am the problem. Something's wrong with me. Children are egocentric, and that's actually what they need to be developmentally. But the problem is when you grow up in trauma and you're egocentric, everything that happens to you says that I'm the problem. It's my fault. I'm not okay. I'm not worthy. I'm not lovable. I'm, I, I don't deserve to be on this planet. And it gets to be that intense for our kids. And so when they don't want to feel that, who wants to feel that? Who wants to feel like they are nobody? Who wants to feel that they aren't worthy? Who wants to feel that they're unlovable? No one wants to feel that. And so they project it back onto the people in their lives. Because it's much easier to say, I hate you, rather than to look in the mirror and say, I hate myself. They put everything back, away, away. They don't want to feel it. Everything that our kids do, are, it's all about not wanting to feel it. I don't want to feel this horrible, horrible feeling. So when a kid says, this assignment's stupid. Ever had that one come up? Put it back. Switch it around. Put it through the lens of trauma. Lens of trauma says, I feel stupid. And this assignment is only going to make me feel more stupid. So the resistance many times that we get where kids don't want to do their work, it's not about being lazy, it's not about being resistant, it's not about being disobedient. It says, I can't do this because I feel bad enough about myself and that piece of paper is going to make me feel even worse about myself. Here's another one. You're really pissing me off. They said that, not me. What does that say? What, I want you to put that through the Google Translator. I need you to know that I'm about to hit my window of stress tolerance. They just don't have the words to say it. It's much easier to say, you're pissing me off, versus, hey, you know, I'm really hitting my window of stress tolerance right now. But my goal is to help students to actually learn to say that. And I have been in classrooms where even the littlest ones can start to say, I'm just regulated. And to take it to that place of empowerment and responsibility that I am in charge of my feelings. I am in charge of my behavior, but I'm going to look at it through a lens of, of emotion. So getting kids to move from a place of saying these nasty things and pushing things back onto you is really the goal here, to help them be able to learn how to talk about their feelings, learn how to be able to express themselves so that we can get rid of the profanity, we can get rid of the obnoxious behaviors. What about, she gets on my nerves. That's actually true. This is really literal. This is all about their nervous system. So the translation here is, my nervous system is overwhelmed. And so next time kids say things, I want you to stop. And before you correct them, just go, oh, what does this really mean? What does this really mean? What is this child trying to say? Get away from how inappropriate it is. And get away from how nasty it is. And just stop and go through your Google Translator and go, okay, what does this really mean in the language of trauma? You're not in charge of me. I'm sure you've had that one. If you haven't had them say it directly to you, they certainly have said it very much in their behaviors. And so what is this really about? It says, I'm scared. I'm scared that you'll hurt me or reject me. Because if I reject you first, then I don't feel the rejection. 
their histories are so, so full of rejection is that the minute they start getting close to, you know, here's the other piece. We talk about all about relationship. Let's get close to our kids and connect with them. It's scary to them. And you know what they'll do? The minute that you do get close to them, they will do something to disconnect because they are so scared that if they are close to you, that you will reject them because their history has said and the patterns of their lives say that you will uh, reject me. And so they beat you to the punch. It's that sense of vulnerability that says, I'm so scared. I'm so scared that you'll, that you'll leave me. And they will test you with their behaviors. When you see that you've connected with a student and you're right there with them, you're like, oh, we're really good here. And then the next day or the next minute, all of a sudden they start getting worse and worse and worse. And, and you're like, oh, they're just testing me. The answer is yes. Yes, they're testing you. Because are you going to stick with them? Are you going to push them off to another school? Are you going to push them off to another classroom? Because their history says that you're going to do that. And so when you see an elevation of negative behaviors after you've really connected with them, I want you to hold strong. Just hold strong to that because they need you to roll with them. They're, they're testing out your level of unconditional love, and they will test you the deepest level possible.